When you use a Kubernetes local development tool, it makes a massive difference in the speed and ease at which you develop and test your application. It can make your workflow much faster and less tedious, creating a shorter feedback loop. And this enables you to iterate faster on changes to your application. So in this video, we're going to take a look at how you can introduce Tilt, a simple yet powerful local development tool for Kubernetes, into your development workflow and how you can use it to speed up the development and testing of your microservices application directly in a Kubernetes cluster. And we're going to see how you can get started using Tilt in your project with just a couple of initial configurations. If you're developing a microservices application and the production environment where the application will be deployed to is a Kubernetes cluster, then you likely need to have the application thoroughly tested first in a cluster that is either identical or almost identical to the production cluster. By testing fast in a lower environment, we get to iron out any potential issues and bugs early on, ensuring a much smoother process when we eventually deploy to production. You can get Tilt installed on your machine using this curl command. You can also check out the getting started guide in the official Tilt documentation for the instructions on how to install in case you're running Windows. I will also have a link to the project code and the commands in the description below. And if you're finding some value in this video, please like and subscribe. So once Tilt is installed, you can then run Tilt up from your project directory. This starts a web browser on your local machine and deploys any tilt resources you have defined in the tilt file. If no tilt file is available, you get a prompt asking you to create a starter tilt file. A tilt file is a set of instructions on how tilt should deploy your application. Tilt files are written in Starlack, which is a dialect of Python. So if you use Python, the syntax will look familiar. Although, as you will soon see, the syntax is quite simple and knowledge of Python is not necessarily required. Tilt also provides a web UI from where you can view all your resources in a single pane of glass. You can access this UI by navigating to localhost on port 10350 in your browser. If this is the first time you're running Tilt in this particular project, the first message you will see in the Tilt UI is that the Tilt file has successfully been loaded but no resources have been found. So resources refer to anything you are able to deploy with Tilt like deployments, jobs, stateful sets or even docker containers on your local machine. If your project has a docker compose file for building and running your containers, you can run it with Tilt by using the docker compose function and providing the file name in the Tilt file. As soon as you save the changes, Tilt will go ahead and build and run all the containers. You can see the status or view the logs of each service from the Tilt UI. Any changes you make to your project's source code or the Docker Compose file will trigger a Tilt reload, which will in turn trigger a rebuild and redeployment of the application. If your Docker Compose file does not have a build context, Tilt also provides a Docker build function to help build your Docker images. This function also helps us build images for use in a Kubernetes cluster. So let us see how we can now test an application in a Kubernetes cluster using Tilt. So using the docker build function in the tilt file, you specify the image tag for your service, which includes the registry URL. It is important to make sure that the registry is accessible on both your local machine as well as the test cluster. Then you specify the path to the services docker file and the path to the source code. And then finally, you have the live update section, which configures tilt to perform live in-place updates of the containers running in the cluster. In this example, the sync function here will watch for changes in the slash API slash app path of your local project directory and sync those changes to the slash app path inside the running container. We will see this in action shortly. And in case you'd like to run additional commands when file changes are detected, you can do that using the run function. This run function will execute a pip install if it detects a change in the requirements file in order to update the dependencies. Again, we'll see this in action shortly. You can create a new docker build block for each image you have in your project. Once you save the tilt file, you can see from the web UI that the tilt file acknowledges the addition of the images, but will skip the image build since no deployment instructions have been provided. 
You can remedy that by creating some Kubernetes manifests. You can create all the manifests you wish to deploy to a Kubernetes cluster and place them somewhere in your project directory. With all the manifests in place, you can use the k8yaml function to create your Kubernetes resources. The k8yaml function takes the parts of all the manifest files you wish to deploy as arguments. You can also set some port forwards with the k8 resource function so that you can easily access your services from your local machine. And finally, we need to define the Kubernetes cluster you wish to deploy to with the allow k8 context function like this. So when you save the tilt file and view the logs in the UI, we can see the image builds happening. We also see the images being pushed to the registry. And then finally, we see the deployment of the manifest files in the cluster. So all of these steps are being executed seamlessly for us by tilt. Once we have properly set up our initial tilt configuration, we do not have to do much after that. Tilt will take up all the heavy lifting. We can verify on cluster as well that the deployments were indeed created. So you notice we still have some container errors and we can diagnose the issue from the logs, uh, which you can also see in the web UI. The error seems to be related to Postgres, which is required by some of the applications, but no Postgres database is present in the cluster. Tilt also enables us to create deployments with Helm, which we can use to deploy an out-of-the-box Postgres instance in our cluster. So to do that, we first make sure the Helm extension is loaded with this function. Then using the helm repo function, we can add the helm repository, which contains the Postgres helm chart. And finally, we have the helm resource function, which helps us deploy the Postgres helm release. You can add extra configuration options as well, like I have done here with the target namespace and the storage class configuration. Applying the changes to the tilt file will create a new Postgres resource. You can also inspect the logs in the web UI to monitor the deployment process and watch out for any errors. So now that you have your application running in Kubernetes, you are able to continue active development on your application and tilt will keep your deployments updated. Notice what happens when I make some changes to the API service. When I add a new module to the source code, Tilt will immediately copy the new file into the container running in Kubernetes, which you can verify with the kubectl exec command. Updating the contents of the file will also trigger a live update of the corresponding container files. Let us say now I need to add the Redis module to the process microservice, which as you can see when I exec into the container is not already installed. So when I add a new dependency to the requirements file, this will update the requirements file in the container and trigger a pip install to update the installed dependencies. Attempting to import the Redis module once more should succeed this time round. So hopefully now you have a bit of an introduction on what Tilt is and how you can set it up into your project right away. You can check out the documentation for more configuration options and also check out the link in the description to the GitHub repo to the microservices demo project as well as a readme file with step-by-step -step instructions. And if you'd like to know how to set up a production-ready cluster to test out Tilt, watch this video over here. Thank you again for watching and if you'd like to support the channel, please like the video and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.